told that little things are sent to try us, perhaps one of the most trying is an apparently friendly little creature who clings to us like a brother, only more so. He's a most irritating chap, as you'll find if he happens to run across you. Still, we can avoid him if we know his favourite haunts. Let's take a peep behind the seams at one of them. Here he is, in all his glory, with several friends and relations. They have a number of aliases. Chats is one, Cooties another, but Seam Squirrels is the best, as any old soldier can tell you, for one of their favourite hideouts is in the seams of clothes. However, we are going to call them by their official name, Lice. Their favourite game is Happy Families, as you'll see if you examine a shirt where they're entrenched. You'll probably find that each corner has been used as a nest, and egg production is in full swing. Under the microscope, the eggs appear like grains of rice. The louse lays these on mass production lines. They hatch out very quickly, the warmth of your body acting as an incubator and saving the mother from any further responsibility. Once out, the youngsters are full of life, eager to take a stroll in this grand new world. The seams of vests, pants and shirts are the highways of the lice family. It would be bad enough if they'd only keep still, but they won't. And because they won't, you can't. So it's scratch, scratch, scratch all day. Here they are on the human body, which supplies them with warmth and food, without which they must pine away and die. Hardly a thing of beauty, is he? All the same, you'd hardly believe that this small beast is capable of killing grown men. But it does, by means of these diseases septic skin infection, relapsing fever, typhus, trench fever. Septic skin infections. The intense irritation caused by the bite of a louse naturally makes you scratch. Septic inflammation of the skin may easily follow, leading to pimples, boils and even widespread blood poisoning. Relapsing fever. Lice, when they bite, suck up blood, and so pick up the germs of certain diseases which they pass on to healthy men. By squashing a louse so infected, its blood gets into the pores of the skin, and so relapsing fever is transmitted. Typhus and trench fever. These diseases are transmitted through the droppings of infected lice. These little pellets, left on underwear or on the skin itself, may get rubbed or scratched into a man's skin, so that he in turn develops the disease. The pellets may be a direct gift from the louse, they may have been left in a borrowed shirt, or they may even be blown about in the dust. History is full of disasters to great armies in the field caused by this tiny beast. For instance, lice killed them. Lice spread typhus amongst these. Lice, not bullets, caused their death. Lice murdered them. Typhus, spread by lice, destroyed half a million, and with it always went relapsing fever. Trench fever, spread from man to man by lice. Endless suffering, needless waste of manpower, all brought about by this small murderer alone. When living in barracks, by regular attention to personal cleanliness, one ought to be able to avoid lice altogether. It's surely not difficult to keep clean. Every inducement is offered to make individual cleanliness not only a habit, but a pleasure but everyone must play his part. Sleeping quarters with polished floors and individual lockers encourage the self-respect which some fellows are inclined to shed on joining the forces. Blankets, for instance, are a personal issue. Keep them to yourself. The periodic cleansing of these in a modern disinfector should do much to remove the risk of unwanted passengers. As your blankets are sealed up and then subjected to steam at very high pressure, 
any stray louse is liquidated. The regular laundering of your underwear gives every chance to a man, but none to a louse. Cleanliness is really a very easy job, but it's always possible for someone to spoil the show. Consequently, a check has to be kept. For instance, it isn't for appearance sake alone that one's hair should be kept reasonably short. Human hair is a favorite nesting place for lice. Now that man's letting the whole side down and amid ideal conditions too. In the field, of course, it isn't so easy to maintain ideal arrangements for cleanliness, yet obviously we dare not let the louse get the upper hand. At regular intervals, everyone should be inspected. For lice are no respecters of persons, one shirt's as good as another, and they frequently take up lodgings in the one next door. It's vitally important that all men of a platoon or company be inspected at the same time, on the body and in the clothes. As if they're missed and they happen to be harboring lice, they'll continue to infect their clean comrades and all the good work will be wasted. Trousers have to come off, of course, but not for universal exhibition. There are some hard cases who'll always try to dodge the column. Others, perhaps on fatigue at the quarter blokes, may have been overlooked. Round them all up, for your own safety. Spread the net wide. Let nobody escape. As often as not, it's just these men, whether they're aware of it or not, who may be the cause of the trouble and whose absence makes the whole inspection a waste of time. There you are, and there he is. A favorite spot, the armpit. Of course, he's surprised, shocked, indignant. The innocent party always is. Not like the hardened case. Now, the army has made special arrangements to help you in this fight against lice. On realizing their presence, the MO calls the field hygiene section, an RAMC unit in the charge of a specialist hygiene officer, with qualified sanitary assistance mounted on motorcycles. lorries with equipment and personnel. A portable disinfector mounted on a lorry. All prepared to tackle any hygiene problem which may arise in its allotted formation. Arriving at the camp, it goes immediately into action. And while quarters are being sprayed, the portable disinfector, the mobile equivalent to the permanent one we saw at the barracks, makes a thorough job of all blankets. Meanwhile, the medical officer has summoned the mobile bath unit, a pioneer corps unit with all the equipment of a bathing and disinfesting establishment packed on three lorries. The most elaborate section is perhaps the portable disinfester with its burners, framework of tubular steel and double canvas covering. By the time it's erected, the dressing and undressing tents and showers are also ready. The mobile bath unit's job is to bathe, barber and disinfest all troops of the formation for which it works. But it's also on immediate call for such emergencies as the present and can be set up where the troops may readily be brought to it. On debussing, the men make their way to the undressing tent. Before removing his clothes, each man receives a numbered disc to avoid any confusion of clothes, and a Dorothy bag in which to place his personal property. As soon as battle dresses are removed, each is threaded on a rod, numbered to correspond with the disc issued to its owner, and placed in racks in the mill bank disinfester. Shirts and underwear are dealt with elsewhere. Meanwhile, at the rear of the disinfester, the formidable heating apparatus is getting underway. As soon as the compartments are filled, 
the flaps are laced up, and goodbye to any lice in those uniforms. A birthday suit being without pockets, discs will be worn on the ankles. The shirts and underwear are dumped in a basket to be taken by lorry to the mobile laundry, and Dorothy bags are handed in for safekeeping. Aha, you didn't think the sergeant would spot that long bob, did you? And going to the other extreme, kindly leave your boots on the mat before entering the bathroom. Of course, it's only in warm weather that the showers are set up in the open. And as the water supply can be regulated from really hot to stone cold, there's no fear of any man taking a chill. While the men are thoroughly enjoying themselves under their shower, their boots are receiving similar attention, but with disinfectant. Lice will wriggle their way into boots, and that's why the inside must be sprayed as thoroughly as their owner's outside. Even the duckboards have to be disinfested afterwards because little strangers will sometimes stay behind. After a brisk toweling, you really begin to feel clean and wholesome again. By this time, battle dresses have been thoroughly disinfested, and as each man collects his own, identified by the disc number, he's issued with a clean shirt and underwear. At last he's free from those loathsome little pests. As you exchange your numbered discs for personal valuables, you somehow feel different, clean. And while you return to your fellows, minus that everlasting irritation, the bath unit will be busy cleaning up in case any unwanted gifts have been left behind. The hard case again, he would miss the lorry. Well, he'll have a long walk. Still, he may be able to thumb a ride. Aha, not that one. That's the bath unit lorry, carrying those dirty shirts and underwear to the mobile laundry. That driver should never have pulled up. He's carrying a dangerous cargo, and all other passengers are barred. But just as some fellows are quite happy travelling with a consignment of TNT, others are equally indifferent to a load of lice. The lice have other views, however. Here's a chance to get back to warmth and good food. And do they take it? Of course they do. And so you see, a whole day's work goes for nothing. For thanks to the careless indifference of one man, we are back where we started. At the mobile laundry, an ordnance corps unit, the dirty underclothing is first of all disinfected to kill any lurking stowaways. It's then washed thoroughly and scientifically in an up-to-date steam laundry. Once inside, it's hard to realize that every section of the plant is on trailers. Even the boilers are on wheels. And electric power is supplied by a mobile generator. While the washers are of the modern rotary type. All this may seem very elaborate and expensive to defeat such a small beast as the louse, but remember what disaster and destruction he can cause, how cunningly he digs himself in if we're not constantly on guard. After a thorough washing, the clothes go into a hydro extractor driven by electricity. As its name implies, the hydro extractor removes the surplus water from the clothes. We needn't go into technicalities as to how it works, but it does work, and the clothes are then passed on to an equally ingenious mechanical dryer. As the garments dry, they're automatically released from the rack and then folded by hand to await reissue. There are times, of course, on active service when we're unavoidably thrown back on our own resources. Well, one thing we're never likely to be short of is an oil drum. 
Now an oil drum with the addition of two pipes and a fill of cold water will make the handiest little geyser you'd hope to meet. One pipe goes to within three inches of the bottom and the other just into the top of the drum. Fill it with the water and heat it over a fire. When hot, all you need do is to pour cold water down the long pipe. This forces the hot water out of the short pipe. Well, I said hot water, didn't I? A simple but efficient disinfector for blankets, etc., can be made with two old tar drums and a bent pipe. The bent pipe is placed in the small drum, which is then filled with blankets. In the meantime, the larger drum has been quarter filled with water and brought to the boil. Two stones are placed at the bottom of the large drum, on which the small drum rests. The lid is then firmly fixed. The steam passes up between the two drums, can't get out through the lid, so down through the blankets and up the bent pipe. Here's another simply made disinfector, the Serbian barrel, made from an oil drum, two pipes and a barrel. Two pipes are fitted to the side of the drum, one going right into the drum acts as a filler and safety valve, the other leads from the drum to the top of the barrel. The barrel has a close-fitting lid and a perforated bottom. When water is boiled in the drum, the steam passes through the pipe, down through the contents of the barrel and out at the bottom. After erection, the whole apparatus can be banked up with earth to conserve the heat. Some idea of the intense heat may be gathered from the fact that the blankets are dry in a few shakes and completely disinfected. Well, we've plenty of hot water, so what about a bath? The old oil drum, with a rose this time, and a very simple plug made out of bits and pieces to control the flow. Add an equally simple please pull the chain device, and we're all set for a really luxurious shower bath in the field. In cold weather, the frame may be easily screened with hessian, excluding both draughts and curiosity. And don't forget that water's not laid on. Don't use it all up before washing off the soap. If, despite our endeavours, we're the victims of circumstance, don't give the little devils best. A really hot iron will soon scupper any mobile patrols in the seams of your battle dress, but as you've seen, it's in shirt and underwear that the main body of the enemy will be deployed. Some fellows persist in sticking to the old-fashioned haphazard methods. Largely inspired by laziness, they're not really effective. And remember, this may mean contracting disease, relapsing fever. Ah, he's decided to use his anti-louse powder, AL-63. Rub it into the seams of your underwear once a week, or wear your anti-louse belt, and goodbye louse. It's much better dead. While alive, it caused a lot of trouble and suffering through its bites, blood, droppings, causing septic skin infection, relapsing fever, typhus and trench fever. Don't forget, bath whenever possible, have your boots disinfested, keep your hair short, if necessary, improvise your own disinfector. Have your clothes washed regularly, use your AL-63. Not only for your own sake, but for the sake of everyone.